Hi, Matt McAleer, President, Director of Private Wealth, Cumberland Advisors with Sean Burgess. You know Sean, Portfolio Manager, Trader on our bond team. Last week, I finished off saying we're going to take a peek at what we might expect in Q2. And asset class-wise, we got it this week, Sean. Oh, yeah. Big week. Volatility straight across the board. Mm -hmm. Fixed income volatility, equity volatility, commodity volatility, currency vol volatility. So that back and forth action will create enough movement price-wise to get some reasonable entries here and there. Why don't we review fixed income? Because that got an awful lot of the headlines this week. It, it, was a, it was a big week. We had CPI, we had PPI this week, CPI, which came in largely hot, really kind of strengthened the higher for longer narrative. So you saw markets price that in. You saw the 10-year go from essentially at 430 to as high as a 460. Yeah. That's a big move on the week. Yeah. And really that's traders looking at the market, really questioning how many cuts they're going to be and when they're going to happen. And you went from at the end of 2023, market forecasting six cuts, you're now down to, to less than two by the time you end the year. Yeah. So, you know, it, it, the market really adjusted to what they saw in CPI. PPI came in a little bit better. So we'll see how that plays into, into PCE, which is really the Fed's favored uh, kind of metric for inflation. That's what they really look at. So we'll see if there's any any flow through to that. But really it was, you know, the market looking at that CPI print, getting used to the fact that treasures are going to be higher for longer in here. And the number of cuts may have changed from six to yeah. one to two to maybe none. Yeah. And the, the treasury market took the brunt yeah. of, of that yield jump. Munis looked like they were much stickier. Oh, traded, much, traded. much stickier. Yeah, and you know, we talked about this the last time I was on, that outperformance from munis. It was really nice to see it again, where you're seeing Treasury sell off and munis really not doing very much. So on a week where you had, you know, if you look at the close, as we come into the close, the Treasury down, the 10-year down 15 or so, munis are only down half as much. Yeah. You know, that's a yeah. kind of a common theme we're seeing play out as investors stick by the asset class. But, you know, we are seeing some cheapness on the new issue side, which we're really looking to take advantage as we put money to work. So. Good. Where good, we, can, good where we see an opportunity, we're going to take it. Excellent information. And you mentioned, we mentioned asset classes. That's fixed income. Uh, Equity-wise, the market's trying to share some information with us. It always does, mm -hmm. right? We try to break down equities into different classes, as everybody does. Small cap, small cap growth and value. Mid cap, mid cap growth and value. Large cap. What I like to do when you get this type of volatility is narrow down my frame and look just at the 30 day. Do these indices trade below or above their lowest point of the last 30 days? That's trying to tell us how stiff they are, how strong they are. Unfortunately, small cap coughed it up almost immediately. Yeah. Mid cap, mid cap's fighting a decent fight. And and the S&P or large caps right at its 30 day. The only one that's trading above its 30 day low, I should say, is the NASDAQ. So you are seeing continued relative strength in the NASDAQ. Has it been volatile? Yes. Is there a little bit of uh, you know, concern on valuation? Yes, but we can only invest and trade in what's in front of us. So in terms of how we're positioned with those indices. We run multiple strategies here. One we run is our active passive yes. strategy. We take Sean's bonds, Sean and the bond team, the moose, whether they're munis or taxable, and we marry those to the S&P 500 and the mid-cap 400. And we start at a 60-40 equity to fixed income. But anytime we roll Anytime one of those asset classes gets 5% out of line, so we go to 65-45 or 55 equity, 45 uh, fixed income due to market volatility, we rebalance. Yep. Wonderful strategy. Some of this movement may give us a shot at a little rebalance if it keeps up. Yep. We like to use that as a foundation strategy. It's a strategy that almost any investor should take a look at. So we'll be keeping a close eye if those bounds, those ratios start to move. Yeah, Last year, we didn't have too much movement. In 22, nope. we had plenty. Yeah, we had so, a lot. Again, 
S&P, what, 3% off its 52-week high or, or its high of just two weeks ago. Yeah. We're not overly concerned. No. But let's see what next week brings. Let's see in terms of uh, equity purchasing or selling to rebuy what shows us the best relative strength. On weekdays, we want to see what's green or what's falling the least. Those are, we call those the green beans. Mm -hmm. We try to look for those. By the way, this week uh, we did our Q1 review of all our strategies. That will be out on YouTube next week. So if any of those strategies have an interest for you, certainly take a look and reach out and contact us. Enjoy the weekend. We'll see you next week.